one of the things that Indian art really needs, and a lot of people have expressed this need, is indigenous benchmarks, you know, benchmarks that come out of the culture of India itself. And uh, auction houses form one kind of benchmark, which is a price benchmark, which we've had for a while. But there should also be benchmarks for quality. We hope that the Skoda Prize will form another such important benchmark, that people will look at these catalogs down the years and say, yes, these were the 20 most important shows of this year. And these were the three artists who did the most exciting and innovative work in uh, this year. And so, uh, in terms of the creation of benchmarks for the future, I think the Skoda Prize could play a really important role. When most Indians think of Indian art, they think of artists like M.F. Hussain and that generation. And while they deserve all the recognition they get, uh, a lot of the really innovative work is being done by younger artists and the Skoda Prize as it was conceived by Martin de Costa of 70 AMG aimed to focus attention on that generation of artists and bring it to public notice. Mithu Sen has achieved over the years a really rare virtuosity as a painter and uh, her subject, which is often sexuality and an exploration of sexuality, is quite rare among her generation of female artists. In very recent times, she has also uh, kind of brought in sound and sound installations uh, as part of her work. So she's uh, always seeking to kind of expand her repertoire and that's great. I really cannot separate myself from my work. If I, I can be a part of the works, it will be like complete. Maybe it's, it's, my, it's my obsession, maybe it's a narcissistic kind of psyche or something. The whole title is Black Candy and in bracket, I forgot my penis at home. The whole show is talking about infidelity, it's talking about the anxiety, uh, you know, homophobia, sadomachism, the misogynist mind. You know, it, it is talking about a lot of issues that uh, the male uh, faces or uh, suffers. It is about their crisis, their frustrations. Even it is, uh, it is there, like, you know, where a man is trying to be or desiring to be a maternal man. And then I, I actually displayed all my large, huge, you know, paintings into channels. So or my audience are not, you know, allowed to see all the works like nicely displayed. And, you know, like you just see them and you go back. You have to walk, you have to really move each painting to see other one. So many uh, different acts are actually happening in one level. So you are seeing it, you are, you know, tasting the, you know, like candies and you are uh, listening the music and you are also interacting and uh, physically moving the works. You become a part of that, that, that whole, whole script, whole drama. There is a need in myself that to establish a new kind of language through which I can communicate with my surroundings and I don't want to feel insecure, don't want to feel lonely and whatever I do I want to share with others and uh, therefore a language you know like kind of develops. Kiran, Kiran Subaya. To be apt, I am the person whose name is Kiran Subaya. Now, now for a, for bit, a bit of a of contradiction. contradiction. <coughs> Hello. Hello, I am I'm not Kiran, Kiran Subaya. I am not even the person whose name is Kiran, Kiran Subaya. At this moment, as, as this video is being screened, I am not, not a person, person anymore. anymore. I'm sure I'm going to win by the way. I break the whole scene. Kiran tends to produce much less work every year, and which is fine because every artist has their own uh, way of working. Uh, the result of this is that the show that was nominated for the Skoda Prize had a lot of his work over the past decade. You know, So it's really a kind of distillation of his understanding of different media over a period of 10 years. You know? So it's a really remarkable show in that sense. Mostly I've uh, worked as a sculptor, and even when I work with other mediums, I kind of have the feeling that I'm sculpting it. 
I feel often like sometimes it just came into my head and I feel okay this is something you can do and other people can look at it and experience as close as possible to the thing that I experienced when it came to my mind. So often I feel like I'm just a medium. My perspective, I'm really confused. I don't know. I don't know what it all is actually. <laughs> Generally, there would be a notion of uh, improving, of getting better over a period of time. But uh, I believe that it's, um, it actually doesn't happen. It's a kind of a perspective distortion. Like when you look at things at a distance, they look smaller and the things so closer to you. So even in terms of evolution, I would not look at it as um, getting better. Or it's just uh, changing, kind of moving sideways rather than forward or backward. Alvar Balasubramanyam came uh, to notice for the first time as a printmaker. He was trained as a printmaker. He was extraordinarily innovative in that field. But in recent years, he's more or less given up on that and started making sculptures and concentrating on these sculptures, which are often white on white, as in the latest exhibition. And they form a sort of philosophical riddles, I'd say. But they're not funny riddles, or the answers that you will get are not funny. It's more something to be meditated upon. For me, the whole life is just one. You know, the works or whatever I'm doing, it's just from one life. But it is like a frozen foot impression in the journey. You know? It is separate too. It's not like, you know, I do a series of work, then, you know, finish with it and then, you know, go to the next series. It's always like one lead to the other. I started working with traces. That's how we understand things and that's how the history had been constructed and everything. So then I moved into, oh, there is a traces, but actually the way of understanding happens through one's own knowledge or the baggage, I would call it. So, you know, then I moved to perception and reality. Maybe we are missing so much, you know. So how, how to talk about that, you know? So from trace to perception and reality, then from there to capturing invisible, because like electricity, gravity, air, sound, you know, everything is here. If you have a transistor, it really receives all the radio waves and, you know, imagine all the mobile signals are here. If you call someone in America, you know, you could speak to them on the same time. So that means, you know, everything is connected, everything is interconnected. So that way, you know, I just thought the invisible territory is so interesting, so I explored it. I deal with a lot of, you know, complex subjects sometimes. It's complex, but not complicated. It's not like, you know, my works are about my personal expression or experience or something. It's not only about what I think and what I feel, you know, it's more about an inquiry. I'm interested in the fame, not the wealth. That is like uh, giving me full confidence to go further. I mean, it matters, but it doesn't matter, you know, both. I will definitely take advantage when I am into this limelight and, you know, people are talking about this show. What next job? completely depends on whether I get this price or not. If I don't get this price, I can do what I want to do and if I get it, I'll just go on holiday. Until I've blown up the money. If I can do what I really love to do, that itself is a great thing. You know, whatever happens like exhibition, appreciation or, you know, good reviews or things like shortlisted for Skoda, these all are bonus. It's, it's not the main thing though. You know, it's just happening as a byproduct.